<clears throat> Anyone tuning in yet? I'll wait a minute or two. Hello. We got a couple in here. Sorry about that minor snafu a minute ago when I accidentally started the live stream before I was ready to. Can you guys hear me okay? I know we got a good amount of white noise going on with the fountain in the back. But I hope you guys can hear me okay. We'll give it a, another minute or two for some more people to join us before we get started. We're going to be talking about some um, methods that hustlers and actual scammers will use in order to deceive people, especially the new investors, into putting their money into some kind of, you know, janky pyramid scheme or Ponzi, or um, just deceiving people into buying pump and dump penny stocks. So we'll chat about that. Let's we'll give it a couple more minutes for some people to pile on in. No, Jimmy, I did not see Russia releasing a vaccine, but if it's out of Russia, then I hope that they test it on them first. And uh, hey, thanks, Doja, for all those contributions you've been sending my way. I appreciate it. It's really Patreon that's making this whole thing possible. I mean, YouTube is nice, but it's, um, you know, Patreon's kind of what's filling the gap. It's the people that I can actually rely on. My cost per click has gone down, or cost per million has gone way down so much since the whole uh, coronavirus thing. YouTube's not paying out like it used to. But it's Patreon that's really filled that gap for me. So I appreciate it. Uh, once I've got more time to actually be making videos, the next ones are going to be the 3K Challenge Season 2, and there's a couple more strategies I want to introduce. I put on the 3K Challenge uh, trade today. It's going to expire on the 21st, so on the 21st, I'll start making the video again. Just give it one more minute for a couple more people to join. Once we hit 50 viewers, then we'll get rolling here. Um, just another minute. So I'm in my trying a new streaming location today, so I'm inside or outside router, but just near my Wi-Fi router inside. Hopefully no more interruptions today. <clears throat> All right, and we have just hit 50. And thank you, Henry, for recognizing the hair. I, I'm trying a mohawk since I'm on quarantine most of my time anyway. Figure I'll try something a little bit different here and see how it goes. Some people are saying I look like an MMA fighter, but I haven't punched anything except a punching bag since like 2008. So it's all for show. All right, we're at 55 now, so let's go ahead and get started. What I want to do today is talk about two really important things, especially to new traders. The first is the ways that uh, scammers will deceive people into joining their janky pyramid schemes, or especially important is the Ponzi's. As people start exploring this really incredible world of finance, there's a whole bunch of people out there who are going to try to trick you into putting your money into something that just does not work, it's not real. We'll talk about that first. And then second, we're going to talk about the hustlers, how they get people to join into their pump and dump schemes and trick uh, especially young and vulnerable investors into putting their money into a company that just doesn't work. I'm talking Wolf of Wall Street style. But sometimes those are hard to identify. It's usually not very clear that it's a pyramid or that it's a hustle. So we'll talk about how to identify it. And the first thing, um, you're going to see it as you get into finance and you start looking up ways to make additional money. You're going to run into the Ponzi schemes. So we know what a Ponzi scheme is. Um, there's no real product behind it, but people will sell you this dream of guaranteed um, low risk money with high volume of profits, high output to profits, um, <clears throat> and extremely low risk. All right, now there's, there's things like that out there where you can go ahead and put money into a investment with a guaranteed return. They're called fixed income investments but the amount of money that you get paid out is extremely low. So when somebody is offering you a very low risk and very high reward investment, then it's already a red flag that it's, it's some kind of scam. With a Ponzi scheme, what's happening is that people will encourage you to invest into an organization or some kind of uh, investment, some trust, and they'll guarantee you that you'll receive high profits. Right? But the problem is there's no actual product behind what you're sell they're actually selling you. Or they don't tell you what that is. And that's because the way these, pure, these Ponzi schemes work is that people will take money from new investors, give it to the old investors to demonstrate, all right, we have, we've made money, we're giving you back your dividend. And then they encourage more people to join the organization. They keep taking money from new investors and paying it to the old investors as though it were money that were coming from the investment itself. 
really they're not making any money with this, this company. All they're doing is taking new investors money and giving it to the old investors to try to demonstrate how successful their product is. It's something that, you know, they named it after Charles Ponzi who ran it in the 1920s, but really it's been around a lot longer than that. Before the London Stock Exchange existed, there were companies that could go around and they would sell their stock in coffee houses to people that were interested in making an investment into either the East India companies or something similar. The South, was it the Southern Seas Company? They went around to coffee shops and sold people shares of stock. Then they'd go to another coffee house and sell shares of stock again. They'd come back to the first people they sold shares to and pay them a dividend to demonstrate that they had made money with this new company. But the problem is they didn't actually make any money. They just took the money from the new investors and gave it to the old ones to try to show them we're making money, continue to reinvest, go get more people to reinvest. And that pattern would keep going, bringing in new investors and paying dividends to the old ones. And they would keep that up for quite a long time until people actually realized this, South China, this uh, Southern Seas company has never launched a boat, and yet they're paying us dividend from their expeditions to the Far East. Something is amiss, and once people realize that, the money all of a sudden disappears, and people realize there was never really any company. It was just a scam, taking money from old, new investors and giving it to the old ones. I fell into one of these traps with BitConnect in uh, 2000. Well, it actually wasn't BitConnect, it was USI Tech. I fell into the trap in 2017 when there was all that hype going on. They promised us, no, that is not a pyramid scheme, Devin Smith. That is not a pyramid scheme. That is a Ponzi scheme. A pyramid scheme is something different. We're going to talk about that again. Um, but for now, we're talking about Ponzi schemes, which are a different type of breed. So it wasn't actually BitConnect that I fell into, but we're all familiar with that one. What I fell into is called USI Tech. Virtually the same exact thing as BitConnect, but not quite. Um, in BitConnect, I think they told you that your investment would never expire. In USI Tech, they told you it would expire. Eventually, you had like 90 days your investment would run, and then you would receive your premium plus interest. So a little bit different, but the same exact idea. They promised you a guaranteed 1% return every single day for as long as you were invested in the company. So here's the problem with that. 1% return, all right, if you put $100 into a 1% daily return for a year, you'd have about $2,000 at the end. If you did that for two years, you'd have $15,000. If you did it for four, you'd have a million and a half dollars with a $100 investment. And if you waited a full 10 years, the amount of money you will have collected by getting a 1% daily return is over six quadrillion dollars. All right, that amount of money does not, I don't think there's a currency in the world with six quadrillion dollars. And they're trying to tell you that for a 1% or a $100 investment, you will have six quadrillion dollars within 10 years. And that every single person, all right, excuse me, 5.9 quadrillion, thank you for the correction, Skundas. You will have 5.9 quadrillion dollars, and every person who invests into this organization is going to have that kind of money. It is impossible. And if you ask them how, how can you pay out that amount of money all the time? They'll give you some vague reason about how they're able to raise that kind of money. And second, they're going to tell you something like, we're changing the world. We're, everything is different with this investment. Now, if you had an investment like that, that could literally change the world, you will not be trying to sell, it people for, sell people for a $100 investment to a bunch of scrubs off the street. If you have a world-changing financial instrument, you will go straight to the biggest finance organizations in the world and do it. All right, major, major red flag. So how else can we identify Ponzi schemes in order to protect ourselves? All right, we've already talked about high return with very little risk. All right, if they promise you that, they are lying to you. All right, the lowest risk securities are the ones that pay the lowest interest. The lowest risk investment is putting your money into an FDIC insured bank account. All right, that's not going anywhere unless banks collapse and the US government collapses. All right, very, very low risk. But the payout is gonna underperform inflation. What's the interest rate on a bank account right now? Like 0.01%, ridiculously low. Anything high, any like, you know, 20% a year, 1% a day, those are way too high, it is suspicious, especially if they tell you it's a guaranteed payment. All right, number two, um, they promise you that the returns are guaranteed regardless of the market conditions. 
All right, that is an impossible circumstance. There is always a condition in which every, which every investment fails. And if it were guaranteed that somebody was able to bring you money, they wouldn't be pumping it to scrubs off the street. They would invest in it themselves. If somebody's trying to sell you a guaranteed investment, it is a lie. All right, if they say guaranteed, ask them what it means, and they'll eventually admit, all right, there either is some risk here because no investment is guaranteed, or if they continue pushing that it is a guaranteed risk-free investment, then it is a lie. All right, third one, you will have an unregulated security and an unregulated seller. All right, anybody who's pushing a Ponzi scheme, they are not going to be licensed by the, but whoever it is they're supposed to be regulated by. All right, they're not gonna be FDIC, they're not going to be uh, uh, accredited by anybody. And the security that they're selling is likely to have no track record at all. And that makes a lot of sense because if it did have a track record, then that means it would be a, a licensed security. A lot of times what you'll see when people try to push things like USI Tech or BitConnect, what they're telling you, they'll tell you something like, oh, you're not making an investment here, you're making a purchase of a product. You are purchasing our cryptocurrency, you are not investing in our cryptocurrency. All right, that doesn't work because the SEC will recognize that something is an investment just by it matching a certain criteria. They'll recognize this, this meets all of the criteria for what is obviously considered a security. All right, and then if it's not licensed, it'll get banned. So you'll recognize when people are selling you a Ponzi scheme, it is an unlicensed individual selling it, and it is an unlicensed um, security with no track record. And they may even try to deny that it's a security. They may try to tell you it's a purchase. That is a major, major red flag. All right, next thing, it'll be vague how they actually produce business. They'll try to tell you something like, oh, we're, we're investing in cryptocurrencies, we're trading cryptocurrencies to make money, or you know, we're, we're performing arbitrage on a financial market. Um, they'll tell you that that is the case. Now, if they were doing something like that and they were getting a 1% daily return, there is no reason for them to be coming to you for it. All right, they don't want to sell it to you. They would try to sell it to somebody who's actually got enough cash to throw behind this thing. And it would become a legitimate business that they could actually get shareholders. All right, so if you have a vague business model that you don't understand, the people that are selling it to you don't understand it, and they're unlicensed, big, big red flags. All right, and then last thing, and this is extremely important, is that there will be issues with withdrawal. It'll be very difficult to get your money back. And I'm not talking about there's some fees, or all right, in order to get your money back in the first year, you've gotta pay like a 10% commission or something. That's not what I'm talking about. Every financial, a lot of long-term financial institutions will have a, a, a penalty like that and try to withdraw early. What I'm talking about is if there is physically no way to make a withdrawal from the company's website, or there is no way to recover your money from the person who sold you the security, the, or in order to get your money back, you have to email somebody. Email some lady at like Brittany1212 at gmail.com and then they'll send you the money. All right, that happens all the time with pyramid scams, or uh, Ponzi schemes, I'm sorry. I experienced that with USI Tech. There was actually no way on the website to withdraw your money from USI Tech after you invested into it. And in fact, they strongly, strongly encourage you to keep your money invested so you can keep getting compound returns. If you cannot withdraw your money, or there is no uh, like predetermined payment plan with dividend on it, then it is a major red flag that you're buying into a Ponzi scheme. All right, those ones that I just talked about are all from the SEC. So uh, those aren't my analyses. I'm gonna have added my own spin to it, but those are straight from the SEC, ways to identify Ponzi schemes. What I'm about to tell you now is my own experience, my own analysis about things that'll go on here. All right, one more thing. Uh, the leaders involved will usually present themselves with great fanfare. They'll demonstrate, look how much we're changing the world with this new investment opportunity, this new security. And you can find those people and look them up. Most of the time, anytime somebody's doing a big Ponzi scheme, they have been involved in fraud before. The USI tech leaders, they had been involved in several cases of fraud um, in Europe and in the United States, and now they were running USI Tech out of the United Arab Emirates. People that are running Ponzi schemes, they won't try to hide themselves. That's too suspicious. They'll present themselves. But they will also, by doing so, give you their name. And when you look them up, you'll most of the time find that they're involved with fraud before. Do not buy anything from a guy who has been involved in fraud before. They should be in jail. Instead, they're fleeing the country, avoiding 
uh, Interpol, and then setting up a Ponzi scheme out of like Israel or uh, the UAE are common ones. All right, look for people that are involved in fraud before. All right. And additionally, when you see a cult-like following behind the scheme, behind the investment, you know that there is a, that there's a problem here. A lot of times these Ponzi schemes will be pushed through social media. So you'll see Instagram or Facebook pages loaded with fake accounts talking to you about their success stories. I put in $1,000, now I have 100000 in less than a year. Um, or you'll see people that are, they'll present problems and ask for advice, but they're not really problems. Things like, oh, I was supposed to get 11500 this month, I only got 11000 So what's the problem here? Did I miss the cutoff date? What's up? So they're trying to present to you. If you get involved in this organization, your biggest problem is that you were supposed to make 11500 and you only made 11000 and you have to fix it. That will be what they're pushing to you as a problem. Meanwhile, there's tons and tons of fake accounts making, uh, talking about success stories that didn't really happen. And the people that do invest will have this cult-like acceptance of this security. USI Tech and BitConnect, man, if you said anything bad about that on one of their online platforms, they will either ban you or they will drag you through the mud and try to tell you that you're afraid to make money or that you're the scammer or that 401ks aren't guaranteed money. They're very risky, so you should buy into USI Tech or BitConnect in order to make the cash. All right, those are things that you'll see all the time in the new age of Ponzi schemes. And uh, so No Idea for Name asks, all right, WSB is a cult-like organization. Is that a Ponzi scheme? No, that's not one because it's, I don't. I think it has a cult-like personality to it. But if you say that WSB is stupid and buying FDs sucks, you shouldn't invest in those. Are people going to disagree with you on WSB on Wall Street Bets? If you say buying FDs is for idiots, are they going to disagree? No, they're going to agree with you. They're going to say, "We know this is stupid. We're just doing it for the money. We're here anyway." But you're going to get upvotes by criticizing it. You can make fun of it. They're not going to try to ban you for criticizing the way people invest. They're going to encourage it. So you might have a cult-like appearance to it, but it's not the type that I'm talking about. I'm talking about you cannot criticize this security without getting banned or, or, or uh, you know, kicked out or told that there's something wrong with you. That's the type of cult I'm talking about. And that happens all the time with pyramid schemes. And yes, uh, Probe Ruster, Rusher also points out that Wall Street Bets doesn't make money off of its users. So Wall Street Bets isn't encouraging people to buy shares of Wall Street Bets that don't exist or and to buy into some other security. That's true, it's just a, it's a community. It's not really an investment. So, um, that's, so that's what I want, that's the, uh, that's the Ponzi scheme. That's the, the essence of it. You'll find all kinds of Ponzi, I think M1 Finance is another one. Very, very obviously a Ponzi scheme. Um, when I bought into USI Tech, I had a feeling it was a Ponzi scheme, but I thought that I could buy into it, withdraw money quickly, get in and out, hot and fast and actually make a profit on it before it collapsed. That was a stupid idea. Don't, don't buy into a Ponzi scheme believing that there, it might be a Ponzi scheme, but believe that you could also get in and out really fast, getting that 1% return on your investment, wait 50 days and then pull out your entire investment and ride the rest. No, it's not, it's not gonna work that way. So they just, um, yeah, they ended up running away with my money. And when I tried to tell people, hey, we've got a lot of red flags going on here. Maybe we should get out of here um, on a Facebook group. I got shut down, I got banned. People with fake accounts were hitting me up, telling me that they were gonna sue me for talking trash about a Ponzi scheme. You know, just tell people, if you think something's a Ponzi scheme, tell your friends about it and remember those red flags. If you've got uh, an unlicensed broker selling you an unlicensed security, guaranteeing you high returns with no risk, and no, but with no track record behind it, and you've got a cult-like appearance to any organizations following it, I can almost guarantee you, you 100% are buying into a Ponzi scheme. You need to get out. Don't put your money into it. Tell people to get out of there because they're going to run away with it. That's how Ponzi schemes work. They just shut down after they collect enough money. They don't let anybody withdraw, and they're just they're gone. They take off with it. So um, that's a big deal. Okay. Um, before we get into the next topic, all right, so that's, that's the Ponzi schemes. Um, does anybody have any questions about that before we get into the next one? We're going to talk about some hustling methods that you'll see your fake internet gurus and these marketers pushing toward you. I'll give it a minute to see if anybody's got comments on it or wants me to address something else there. Let me just take a sec. Um, I've never heard of iMarkets Live. I don't know what that is. How would I feel about starting a Theta Gang Ponzi scheme, easy money? Why does Forex feel like a Ponzi scheme? I don't know what IML is. Um, all right, those weren't very good questions, so 
just gonna move on. <clears throat> All right, the next thing I want to talk about is um. <clears throat> Uh, here we go. Here's some good information. All right, M1 is definitely not a Ponzi scheme. All right, I'm interested in that because the primary way of making money in M1 is to get other people to join the organization. You're make, they are making more money off of new investors than they are about the actual investors that are already involved in it. Your primary way of making money is to bring new investors into the company. Red flag. All right, so I don't know if there is an actual product behind it at all. Um, I'm not sure what that is. Yes, and an MLM is a type of pyramid scheme, not a type of Ponzi scheme. <clears throat> so they're a little bit different. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit because people seem to be interested in MLMs and pyramid schemes and what the difference is between a Ponzi scheme. So with a Ponzi, there is no product. There is n they're not really running any actual company. The money is specifically coming from other investors and going straight into the pockets of old investors, especially the ones near the top. All right, multi-level marketing, it's not a Ponzi scheme because there is a product behind it. So they actually are selling something. Herbalife is one of them. LuLaRoe is another one. Rodan and Fields is also a multi-level market. They're not necessarily scams. So some of those MLMs, they actually do have a real product behind it. They're selling it. Some people do like that product. Where it starts becoming a pyramid scheme instead of just a base MLM, because MLMs could be legitimate or they could be schemes, all right? If they are a pyramid scheme, that means that most of the money is not made by actually selling the product. It's specifically made by bringing new people into the organization, and often when they start, uh, when they join the organization as a salesperson, they will need to buy some kind of starter kit, like a $150 starter kit, all right? Any time that you need to make a purchase in order to join an organization, it is like, in order to join an MLM, no, this is the third time you've asked me, Mr. Mr. Medic. I'm not Mexican, I'm Italian, but thank you, I appreciate it. Anytime you need to buy into an organization in order to become a salesman for it, you are likely buying into a pyramid scheme. All right, people seem to have this idea that, all right, if I own a car dealership, don't you need to buy all the cars first before you sell them? You don't want to become a dealer for Nissan. You got to buy all those Nissans first. No, you do not. Car, um, the car places, they don't own all those cars. Nissan will own that car, all right? And you as the dealer will pay, once the car is sold, you'll pay the money back to Nissan for the price of the car and you'll keep the difference, all right? You don't actually own those cars. You just get an insurance policy that would cover damage to it. I'm sure they've got some kind of franchising costs and things like that. But you don't actually buy all those vehicles first and then go and sell them, all right? When you've got a multi-level market, you need to buy the product first and then sell it to other people, all right? And then if you've got a pyramid scheme, that's where most of the money comes from, bringing other people into the organization to sell them a product that they don't really want, that nobody really wants to buy, unless they're buying it specifically to sell to other people. And right, I hope that made sense. I know that was a little bit confusing. The key thing to look for is, do people actually want and use this product involved in an MLM? If the answer is yes, you know, Avon, Rodan and Fields, all right, those are legitimate MLNs where they might be a little bit overpriced, but the money is actually being used on a product that people want and use. If that's not the case, like LuLaRoe, it is a pyramid scheme. And in fact, those that are managing pyramid schemes will encourage their people to continue buying more product, keep it in an inventory, just make big stacks of it, just keep buying it because eventually you're gonna sell it. All that money that those people down the bottom are inventorying, those will go up to the top. All that money will go up to the top, and the people on the bottom are sitting on a big pile of leggings that they don't want and can't sell. Meanwhile, the people at the top are just pulling in all the money. That is a pyramid scheme. All right, that's the difference between a Ponzi and a pyramid. Pyramid, there is a product that nobody wants, but it actually exists. Ponzi, there is no product. That's the big difference. All right, any more questions about that before I start talking about um, the hustles? All right, not scams, but hustles, ways that uh, gurus and marketers especially will deceive you into making a purchase of a, a penny stock or some other funky security that, uh, that really isn't a very good investment, but they'll trick you into it. All right, I'll give it a minute and see if there's any, any additional questions about that <clears throat> before I move on. Uh, is Nicola a scam? I don't know, maybe, but probably. 99.6% of MLM retailers lose money. I believe that. 
because most MLMs, the ones that really pay for it, um, the, a lot of them are pyramid schemes. And most of those people, they'll never actually take a nice big cut of money from their MLM because it all stays into some kind of um, in some kind of fund with the company. You know, LuLaRoe will keep their money aside and you have to take a pay cut from them. You have to take a cut of your check from them. Um, and a lot of times that just sits there into that fund and they'll disappear before you get out of it. So I do believe that most people don't make money off of it. Um, and people are asking about my hair again. Yes, this is something new I'm trying out. It's like a mohawk, faux type thing. My wife loves it, so I'm, I'm keeping it. I don't know, I think I kind of look like a rooster, but whatever. Um, Steven asked, what's the best way to learn about RSI and MACD? So I do plan on making a series of videos on technical analysis. I just, I haven't been able to do it yet because I want to uh, demonstrate some other uh, investment strategies first, some more Theta Gang strategies, but I will get to it. In the meantime, you could probably find a thousand different videos online about um, RSI, MACD. Look at the secret mindset. He's got some pretty good videos, so uh, check him out. Uh, how old am I? I am 29. I'll be 30 in December. Are candlesticks worth learning? Nah, yes, but don't look at those two-day candles. They're kind of ridiculous. Look at look at how candles interact with the other technical indicators. Look at MACD and moving averages and see how those interact with candles. And it'll, it'll be good. Um, and last question was, this is the last one I'll answer. Gains this week. So I am right now looking at 100% gain on an NVIDIA short put. I tried to exit it prior, but it looks like I'm going to end up holding through. I should get $2,000 at the end of the week, which is good. I'm just going to reinvest that right back into shares. I like building up that foundation. And I'm attempting the Sonic spread, which I talked about yesterday during the live stream. Uh, Sonic spread is going well so far. It's got me in a profitable area already. Um, I'll do a video on that at some point. I might even do a, um, a Patreon post for those that, that support. Um, I'll probably end up doing a Patreon post this weekend, and then I'll do a video another time. All right, Mr. Medic, you gotta stop with the Mexican accusations, man. That's not, that's not cool. And besides, Mexican people will be making more money than you do. You're just watching me talk about stocks. Meanwhile, you got Mexican people out there actually making money right now on a Tuesday doing whatever it is they do. All right, so you can go out and do some work. You don't have to keep watching me. Um, all right, this is actually the last one I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about. All right, did I learn in school? We did a, the only class I ever had in school about investing was um, an investment game that we did my senior year of high school where uh, we just traded commodities, like a commodities investment type thing. So um, I did, I learned a little bit, but it was a very basic level. It just got my foot in the door. But sometimes that's all you need. And all you need is your foot in the door. You just, you see something interesting and then there's so many free resources out there to learn how to do things. And Ajib, thank you so much for the, the super chat. I appreciate it. Thanks guys for the support. Um, all right, that's, it looks like it's just a bunch of funky little notes coming in now. I appreciate everybody's support, thank you. Um, all right, let's, get, let's go ahead now and get into the, um, the hustling side of things. So they're not scams, but how can people deceive you into getting involved in a, what's up, John, into getting into an organization or getting into an investment? It's not necessarily a scam, but it's a bad investment. How will they deceive you into doing it? All right, let's talk about pump and dumps first. All right, a pump and dump, it sounds like... Um, what does a pump and dump sound like? I mean, I don't want to say it because I'm on live, but a pump and dump in terms of an investment context is when marketers will take a penny stock, very, very low price, and buy a boatload of shares. We've all seen this on, uh, the Wolf of Wall Street is similar. All right, they'll buy a boatload of shares at like 0 .001 cents. You can buy with one penny, 100 shares. Now these marketers will buy those securities at the dirt cheap price. And then they'll start reaching out to people across message boards, across Discord channels, across YouTube, whatever it is. They will start sending out these blast messages that this stock is going to rise. They've got multiple patents pending. They're in talks with Amazon is a common one. They're in talks with some huge company to get acquired. They're going to get bought out. They're going to start partnering with something. All these kinds of mm, fake, literally lies, or occasionally there might be some grain of truth to it and they'll pump it as though it's this massive thing you need to buy now. And when you're talking about a stock that sells for less than one cent, you're talking 100 shares for one penny, people will start buying massive amounts of shares. I'm talking 100,000 shares, 200, 500,000, a million shares for like 100 bucks. All right, but the amount of shares that are normally traded on those dirt cheap securities are very, very, very low. So when people start coming through and they're buying a million shares at a time, there's so few um, 
there's so few shares in circulation that people will start buying up all the volume that's available. Imagine a security that's usually trading a million shares a day, now it's trading 500 million shares a day. All people buying into this pump and dump. The stock price is going to rise massively. When you're talking 2,000, 8,000, 10,000 percent, sometimes even more than that. I remember when I first started trading stocks in 2009, um, all I wanted to do was buy penny stocks, dirt cheap penny stocks. I put $100 in that I got from money I, I made selling blood plasma. Put $100 into it and you'll watch it multiply by five in a week because it was part of a pump and dump. All right, here's the problem. There's no value in this company. It's just, it's just paper. The talk that they had with Amazon, that was the CEO watching Amazon on a, Amazon's earnings call on a live stream. They're not in talks to buy Amazon. But people will deceive you into thinking that there is some value in this company. The stock rises, all right? Those in marketers that started spreading the word about this company being a great investment, they sell all of their shares. They dump at the very top to more people that are getting into this security. It causes the stock price to drop. So the people that were buying in on the way up, suddenly you've got these pump and dumpers dropping four million shares at a time, and tens of million shares dumping it all off the stock price collapses so all the other people who bought on the way up they start selling too and it causes the stock price to completely disappear and that usually happens within like one day two days three days max the stock will just dump off into where it was before the pump and dump started the person that marketed this pump and dump is now very rich and can do it again with a new security because what are they going to do they're going to take a screenshot right before they sell and say, look, I turned my $10,000 investment into 1.5 million. Here's my next pick. And they're gonna send it all out to more message boards, they're gonna send emails, all kinds of things. <clears throat> all right, that is a pump and dump. The people who make money off of those things are the ones who get in really early and sell as soon as they've made money. And those are usually the ones that are hearing and working directly with the marketer. Um, I was a victim a couple of times of a pump and dump when I first started investing. In 2009, when I should have been buying Bitcoin, when it first came out, my friend showed me Bitcoin and I thought it was stupid, so I didn't buy it. Instead, I bought a company called Cross Atlantic Commodities, CXAC. I think it might still be floating around out there, but it's definitely bankrupt by now. They were talking about how they were about to start, they had like some exclusive contract, they were gonna start bringing makeup back and forth across the Atlantic Ocean for exclusive suppliers, makeup out of Milan and Paris and all these other things. <clears throat> I bought $100 worth of that stock. All right, I bought like a million shares for $100 or something. All right, um, it did go up. It went up, I was at one point up to $1,000. But you buy into the hype, that's the problem. For that $100, I bought into the hype that it's just gonna keep rising. Maybe this deal is for real. Maybe this company really is gonna make a ton of money. But no, of course, in one day, sold off completely. And uh, I think my man BCing you is still watching this. I hope he is. He might remember Sponge Tech. So I bought $50 worth of Sponge Tech, S-P-N-G. Right, I was 18 years old. And um, this company makes SpongeBob sponges. Like they made cartoon sponges. I was like, wow, that's brilliant. That's like the greatest thing I've ever heard. I get to wash my car with a SpongeBob sponge? This is awesome. So I bought $50 of it. And within like one day, I was up to 250 bucks. So what did I do? I talked, BC I brought BC and you, we're, we're friends in real life. I brought him uh, and a couple of other friends out to Chili's. I was buying all the food. I bought all the non-alcoholic beverages because we were under 21, and I paid for everybody. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna be so rich, this is easy. I just made 250 bucks in a day. All right, back to my house, check my stock, and it was just, it was like down 80% from where I bought it. The, the, I mean, it really looked like a, just a steep drop right off, and I was pissed. And I'm sure BC and you remembers that. I was furious that I had been deceived and think that this company was valuable. Um, that was probably my, the last time I invested in a pump and dump. Um, there probably have been a few more, but I used to think, all right, one of these companies is eventually going to hit it. One of these companies has to be the real deal. 999 out of 1,000 of these penny stocks never go anywhere. And the marketers will deceive you into thinking that they are, so that you buy shares after they, well, after they, the marketers have already bought them. You're buying, they're buying shares here, you're buying shares here, they sell it here, and then it drops off, and you're selling way down here. It's vicious, but people make a ton of money into that. All right. <clears throat> But that makes you wonder, how are they actually able to achieve so much success? Other than just talking about, uh, you know, on message boards, how can they really start selling people classes and, um, and, and other resources to learn how to identify pump and dumps before they go big? 
All right, they're saying, hey, watch me. I just made, you know, 1.5 million off of this company. Not talking about how the fact that everybody else lost it. They'll say, I made 1.5 million off this company and I can show you how to do the same thing. For $2,000, you'll get my exclusive class, uh, 12 hours of content to make you know how to identify these stocks before they take off. And you're like, all right, how the hell are you gonna do that? Here's how they do it, all right? Imagine $500. All right, you're gonna take $500 of your money, you are the marketer, all right, you are the marketer who wants to solicit a pump and dump and to sell people classes, okay? You're gonna take $500 to invest into this organ, into, into a, um, like either a YouTube platform or a email marketing, something or other, okay? Your goal, or your old, only goal at this point is to collect email addresses of people that are interested in investing. All right, so for $500, you're gonna run an ad campaign. All you're trying to do is get people to write in their email. That's it, so far. <clears throat> you're gonna get like 10,000 email addresses, okay? So you run an email, you run a campaign, $500, you now have 10,000 email addresses. And you wanna to demonstrate to these people that you are an incredible investor and you wanna show them how to make money too by buying a class. So here's what you do. You got start with that 10,000, okay? To 5,000 of them, you're going to sell them, or you're not going to sell them, you're going to send them an alert, an email alert, something like that, that says this controversial stock like NEO. You're going to tell those 5,000 people, NEO is going to rise, you need to buy calls right now. And then you're going to go to the other side. You're going to take these 5,000, and you're going to tell them, NEO is a scam, it's a terrible company, you need to buy puts, because NEO is going to crash. Okay? You wait two weeks, NEO does something. Let's say it goes, let's say it goes down. All right, Neo goes down. All the people that bought or that followed you when you said you, uh, Neo's gonna crash, you need to buy puts, those people just watch you get it right. <clears throat> and you're gonna show them, hey, I just made, you know, whatever, $100,000, all right? These 5,000 that just saw you get it wrong, you're gonna continue sending them emails, but you're not worried about it anymore. They watched you get it wrong on your first bet, they're gone, they're no longer interested. But these 5,000, they just watched you get it right. So now you're gonna take those 5,000. What are you gonna do? 2,500 of them are gonna get another email that says another controversial stock, let's say Space. Tell them, hey, Space, great company, lots of growth potential. This stock is gonna go up. You need to buy calls right now. And then you take the other 2,500 and you send them an email that says, hey, Space is trash. This company is all a scam. They have no employees, no budget. It's, it's garbage. It's going down. Buy puts, okay? Now 2,500 again, each watched you on each side of that. All right, wait a couple weeks, space is gonna do something, let's say space goes up. All right, now you've got 2,500 people that just watched you get it right twice. Hey, this guy made money by knowing that Neo was gonna go down and that space was gonna go up. All right, the other 2,500, they're 50-50. They're you're gonna keep sending them emails, but you're not really worried about them anymore. Now you've got, uh, what is it, 2,500 people that have watched you get it right twice in a row. So uh, you guys can probably see this coming. What do you do next? You split it in half again. These 1,250 are gonna get an email that another controversial stock uh, give me one, I don't know, Kodak, okay? Kodak is a great company, this is all real. They are gonna make money, you gotta buy calls on Kodak. The other, 50, the other 1250, you tell them, hey, Kodak is garbage, this is all nonsense, it's gonna go down. All right, so, you, know, you know how this goes. Kodak is gonna do something, let's say it goes down, because it's probably gonna go down. Now you've got 1,250 people that watched you get it right three times in a row three times you got it right on a controversial high volatility stock and if they had followed you they would have made a ton of money three times in a row they're already hooked but we're just going to do it two more times just for good measure all right but you're going to get left with i wrote this down you're going to get left with 312 people that watched you get this thing right five times in a row and you're going to have 625 people that watched you get it right four times in a row before you got it wrong once and then on the other side you know there's still people that they watch you get it wrong a couple times but you know half of that group that um, saw you get it wrong the first time, they watched you get it right the next four. So now you've, got, now, you've, now you've got a lot of people on the hook right now that have watched you get this stock picking thing right a whole bunch of times. You've also got a lot of people that watched you get it wrong five times in a row, but you don't care about them. They're, they're gone, they are just part of your email campaign, you're no longer interested. You're interested in those 312 people that watched you get it right five times in a row. So let's go ahead and let's send them another email. Hey, we've got this exclusive offer here. I wanna show you how to do what I just did. For $2,000 one time, I'm gonna show you how to pick stocks like I do. And you're gonna make a lot of money too. Even if one in 50 of those people 
get on board and actually buy it, that's $12,000. And all you did was get, uh, what is that, six people out of your, out of your uh, 10,000 you started with? You got six to buy this course using that method, and you're already up $11,500. And of course, there's gonna be other people that watch you get it four times in a row. They're also hooked. But let's just say only 1% of those people actually get on. That's another $24,000 of profit or that's $24,000 in total of profit. And that's a less than 1% conversion rate. In real life, it's probably a lot higher than that. If you were to pull a $5,000 or a 5% conversion rate, I didn't even do the math on it. What is that, $60,000? From a $500 email marketing, you got 60 grand. It might've taken you about two months to run this whole campaign. But that's no problem, because you just got 60 grand out of it. And also, you're gonna be running additional campaigns at the same time. All right, you've got multiple groups of 10,000 people that you're working with. All right, so that is a lot of money that you can make off of these things. And it's not as though that these hustlers that are selling you classes really need to put a lot of time into the class once you buy it. It's gonna be all automated stuff. It's gonna be all automated classes and they might do one live stream at the very beginning to introduce you to it. And they're gonna say, hey, you know, do these 16 hours of videos or whatever. And then we'll do another thing at the end. So they might do maybe two live streams for two hours total in this whole time. And meanwhile, they are deceiving you into buying courses, and they have probably along the way tricked you into buying some BS companies, and you've given them a lot of money for doing it. All right, is it a scam? Maybe, it's not illegal, but it is a hustle. So be careful when you join any of these email marketing campaigns for stock picking. A lot of the time, I can't say most of the time, but a pretty substantial amount of the time, it's gonna be exactly that, a hustle designed to trick you into thinking that the stock picker is a genius. And you're gonna buy that course and he's gonna make money and all he's doing, he's not actually picking stocks at all. He's playing both sides of it by tricking people into thinking that he's gotten it right five out of five times. All right? Nobody is that good. But that is exactly what people are doing when they hustle you. Be cautious about those things. Um, have I ever fallen into one of those traps? No, because I've never bought a course before. But I have gotten to the point where I've gotten into people's, um, like, demonstrating live stream type things where, hey, where, you know, uh, they don't just send you an email alerting you that there's a course coming up. They'll actually send you an email invite to a live stream where they show off what they're doing. Um, these guys, they were showing off. I, I couldn't identify the pattern at the time of the stock option strategy. I didn't know what it was. Now I know what it is. It's a, um, they were using what's called a double diagonal where you're doing a calendar spread on puts and a calendar spread on calls at the same time. And it makes this kind of funky pattern where you get like this wave top where you want the stock to wind up in between two strikes, but you really want it to end up very, very close to one of your strike prices. Um, it's kind of like a condor, but a little bit different. Um, I've gotten that far before, and the guy's voice was really annoying. He was like, if the trade goes way against you, all we do is manage by the numbers. I was like, dude, come on. Like, you're not telling me anything. All you're doing is just telling me that you're a genius. You have not demonstrated any prowess for picking stocks. You have not showed us even a hint of the method. Something was deceptive, so I didn't buy the course. Even though I had thought about it at one point, I decided not to buy it. And honestly, I don't think there's really any reason out there to start buying these stock trading courses. I have never met anybody who was like, I paid two grand for this course, man, it has changed everything. Unless it was part of like some advertising testimonial. I've never met anybody in real life or online speaking in a candid, non-paid sense that has said, yeah, this, this paid uh, advertising or this paid stock picking course really turned things around for me. I have heard several times people say, hey, Theta Gang has changed my whole outlook on investing. I'm now making money consistently. I've seen that all the time, but I've never seen anybody come back and say, hey, your stock picking strategy works out great. I'm so glad I paid two grand for this course. That's why I don't sell courses because I don't think you need to. I'm more interested in bringing content for free I think there's more value in it and people actually like you at the end of the course instead of feeling like they just got robbed out of $2,000. So that's why I don't, I don't recommend paying for any courses like that. You can find it all for free online. Hundreds of thousands of videos on YouTube about how to do it. Um, that's pretty much you know, what I wanted to cover as far as hustling goes. Um, I'm interested in seeing some kind of questions, anything you guys have about that or your experiences. Type something up, maybe something I can address. <clears throat> Yes, represent Theta Gang, thank you all. Um, is Theta Gang free, is the question from Johnny Banana. Um, all right, to invest in Theta Gang, your theoretical minimum to invest with a spread is $50. If you have $50, you can put on an iron condor or even a credit spread 
for like, you know, a $20 max loss, but you will need at least $50 of collateral to do a spread. Um, I'm not aware, aware of any broker that'll, I don't even think there is an opportunity to do it for less than $50. Um, but for 50 bucks, you can, you can lay on a spread. That's not really an expense because theoretically you're gonna get it back if the trade goes well. Um, all right, what's my opinion on guys like Ty Lopez and Grant Cordon? I, I don't know Grant, I do know who Ty Lopez is though. All right, um, if you've got a guy who's talking in his garage about how cool his cars are that he just rented, all right, and probably a house that he Airbnb'd, and he's talking for an hour and you can't skip ahead and he keeps promising you throughout the video, hey, at the end of this thing, there's gonna be a $100 coupon, it's worth $100, and he talks for an hour, all right, you tell me if that is a real serious investor. Right, is that a person who's gonna make you money? A guy that's making you sit there, listening to him talk about how cool the car is that he owns, even though he just rented it, or probably leased it in a house that he owns that he probably just, you know, either rented for a day or he owns it and plans on flipping it. All right, is that the type of guy who you think is really has your best interest in heart? Nobody who's really making money like that is trying to just make money by showing you off, by selling a dream about you can be as cool as me. That's not the real thing. All right, that's not the real deal. Um, I Somebody else asked about Ricky Gutierrez. All right. First time I watched Ricky Gutierrez, I didn't like him because I thought he was just another one of those like, you know, bull market, you know, pigs that just make money like that. I didn't like him at first, but I watched some more of his videos. I think he's a pretty genuine type of guy. He is a, he, what he does is very risky. And if you're buying three times leveraged ETFs on commodities, uh, it's very risky what he's doing. If he's proficient at it, okay, that's fine. I do think that the reason he's able to do what he does is because if he loses money on an investment, he's got a really nice floor underneath him where people are paying him for stock advice and for his live streams. So I don't think he's a scam. I think he is the real deal as far as what he's doing is legitimate. He's making money doing it. I don't think it would be fair to look at Ricky and say, you know, if he's doing it, I can too with the resources I have because that's not the case. He's only able to trade with the risky strategies because he's already got a very, very strong foundation. So if you have a fixed annuity where you're getting $2,000, $4,000 a month or you've inherited a large amount of money, yeah, you can trade like he does. It's fine. Just be prepared that there's going to be a learning curve and there's going to be some risk. Hi, I kills you. What's going on? Um, there's a lot. Of, I'm sure there's a ton more of these people that I don't know about. You know, they're all generally the same thing. What I can advise you is if the guy is, if his brand is rich asshole, then he is a rich asshole because he is selling you guys something. All right, Ricky Gutierrez, he doesn't have the brand of rich asshole. Ty Lopez does. Uh, Timothy Sykes, his brand is rich asshole. And he's trying to tell you, you could be rich asshole too if you just buy my course. That's deception, okay? Don't, don't get involved in something like that. Um, and yeah, serotonin, army pay is basically an annuity in some ways. Yeah, kind of, VA is. All right, um, all right, recommendations for brokers. All right, the, the free ones that I like, um, I like Robinhood only for the very noob traders that they need to have their hand held. Because the one thing I can say about Robinhood is that it has a phenomenal user interface. I mean, it's the best user interface I've ever seen on a stock platform. It's super intuitive. It's designed for people that don't know what they're doing. And that's fantastic. I like that. Um, that's why I use it for the 3K challenge and for when I want to demonstrate a spread. Like I want to demonstrate a strategy for the Theta Gang strategy series. I'll use Robinhood just because it's got the best interface. I like that. So if you're brand new, then go ahead and you can use, um, you can use Robinhood. Um, the second one that I, I like, I'm not 100% on, is Weeble. I think they've got a great set of resources when it comes to research. So if you're the type that really wants to look at the details of the security, you want level two information for free and you know how to use level two market data, Weeble is awesome for that. But they don't have spreads. You can only buy and sell calls or buy and sell shares. They've got to implement spreads before I'm willing to say Weeble is the way to go. Uh, I don't know when they're going to do that because you keep saying, oh, spreads are coming, spreads are coming, and then they never show up. So a little iffy on Weeble. I think they will end up becoming the better. Um, as long as you don't need your handheld, I think they basically will beat out Weeble for the best brokerage, but not until they get their spreads fixed. And they got to shake this image of being a sketchy Chinese company. They got to do that. I mean, nobody wants to invest in anything in China right now. They are, their, their headquarters is in China, but they've also got the U.S. brand. They've got the U.S. and they, the U.S. branch of the company complies with all U.S. regulations. So whatever they're doing is consistent with what all the other brokers are doing. So I don't think it's just all straight up a scam. Um, but Webull is, 
they're not going to be the best until they shake this image of being associated with China and they um, implement spreads. Then I can say they're better. I use Merrill Lynch for my main uh, investment account just because if you use your bank's investment firm, a lot of times you'll get benefits to banking. Like I get an extra, what is it, 0.75% cash back. I'll answer your question in a, in a minute, Wolverine. I've seen you said it several times. Um, I use Merrill Lynch because I get additional cash back on any gasoline. I think I'm up to like 4.5% cash back on gas, 3% back on groceries. If you use their platform, you get bonuses to do it. And if I go to buy a house soon, I'll be able to get a reduced interest rate just because I have so much money with Merrill Lynch that Bank of America gives me benefits. So if you're using Bank of America, Merrill Lynch is good. It's not great. And um, what else? Uh, Tastyworks is probably the all-around best. They're, they're phenomenal. Um, and then you've got TD, you know, Thinkorswim, uh, a whole bunch of other ones. You really can't go wrong. Brokers are all basically the same. Just make sure you're not paying for something that you don't need. That's all. And Bank of America is not the greatest bank. I will admit that. Although I do like how they're evil in my favor. So, you know, when, when they're making a ton of money by... Uh, taking money away from people that are overdrafting their accounts, they're giving it to me in the form of additional cash back. So I'm not hurting anybody by being part of Bank of America. Even though it's kind of a suspicious way of making money, they're doing it and they're giving it to me. I'm not hurting anybody by taking advantage of it. So, you know, whatever. And they've got a decent platform. I will not eat this leaf. I will not do that, Matthew. I've eaten enough grass lately. Um, all right, so Wolverine's question was, um, where did I learn options? So, wait, hold on. Yeah, they all right, give me, give me a couple more minutes. Well, that means me soon. Um, but I do want to say, all right, where did I learn options? So I learned stocks. I learned the concepts behind it when we played a game in high school. Um, it was, I don't remember what it was called, but it was a way that you could invest virtual, it was paper trading, but with commodities. So we were investing in US dollar, investing in gold, oil, wood. I made, you know, like $75,000 of virtual money with sugar. So... But it was all commodities, and uh, when I started doing bonds as a commodity, I ended up losing the entire paper trade account, so I never touched commodities again. But that did get my foot in the door, I was able to get interested in stocks. And like so many people do at the very beginning, they're buying penny stocks, thinking it's going to make them rich. So I screwed up, um, realized I needed something else. So when I opened up my account with uh, Sogo Trade, because it was the cheapest at the time, it's still a decent platform, but it's not great. Back in 2012, it was about the cheapest one you could get. All right, so I signed up with Sogo Trade, and they said, hey, do you, want to, do you want to trade options? And I didn't know what options were. I thought it was just like different options on your website. Like, do you want the option to trade after hours? Do you want the option to receive advice from I was like, yeah, I love having options. Set my home screen however I want to. Give me the option. So I signed up to like level four options, not knowing what any of it was. Um, and it gave me the opportunity to buy calls and puts. Um, so I started buying calls on the cheap. And sometimes it worked well, sometimes it didn't. I didn't really know what I was actually doing. Um, but it got my foot in the door and introduced me that there's a whole world out there besides stocks that I can get into. And I needed to get away from penny stocks anyway. My best trade ever was my first, uh, percentage-wise, my best trade ever was when I bought a put. When I was trading drunk and I didn't know what a put was. So I bought an FD on Dell. And later in that day, Dell had announced that it like was quitting. Like Dell canceled itself for like the rest of the month. So the stock tanked and I was able to make like 10 grand, not 10 grand, I was able to multiply my investment by 10,000% or something extremely high like that. I went from like $10 to $120 something. It was like a thousand percent gain. Um, that worked out great. And from that moment on, I was hooked on options. And really by options, I mean FDs. So I, uh, when I first started getting paychecks, like from a real job after I graduated, I would be getting like, I don't know, $2,000 a paycheck and immediately put it into FDs on Apple. I put it into FDs on whatever dog shit company I felt like was gonna just move. I didn't know what I was buying. And in fact, I thought that like if you buy a call, you always have the opportunity to buy at that price and tech at your strike price. And technically you do. Um, but I would buy a call on Apple, like $25 in the money, thinking that after I make this purchase, I just gotta wait until expiration date. I'm gonna get the money back that I just spent to buy the call, and I get to buy it at a really cheap price. I get to buy Apple shares for 50 bucks, count me in. I did not take into account that when you execute a call, you don't get the premium back. You spent that money, you didn't invest it, you spent it. So if I spend 11 grand to buy a call on Apple and it's deep in the money, 
I'm not really getting that much of a discount when I buy the shares because I just had to put up 11 grand to even get the opportunity to buy Apple at a low price in the first place. So I think when I put in $3,800, it's like my entire month's pay into Apple. Um, back in 2013, I'll never forget this day, Apple went down like 12 bucks in a day. And when you're buying in the money calls and it go, the stock goes down 12 bucks, you're gonna lose like 11,000 or $1,100 of that. So I'd be taking these like 75, 80, 90% losses on these deep in the money calls, losing all that money before I realized I need a better way to do this. Luckily that was seven years ago and I've had plenty of time since then to learn how to do spreads. I learned covered calls first like so many others. I got into the wheel strategy and just loved it. You mean to tell me I get to pick a price that I wanna buy Apple at and somebody will pay me to enter into that arrangement? Apple at the time was like $200. So I was like, hey, if I agree that in two weeks, I'm gonna buy Apple for 190, $10 less than what it is now, somebody will pay me in cash right now for that arrangement. I can sell an out of the money put and get paid. I'm all about it. So I started putting up collateral for things like that and got hooked on it. I was selling cash secured puts. I was wheeling before I knew it was called the wheel. I thought I invented that strategy myself and then posted it online to, uh, that was my, I think that was my, my first post on Wall Street Bets was, um, hey, check out this strategy. I think I called it wheel and deal. So I pretty, it wasn't an altogether original idea and it wasn't an original name either, but I thought I invented it. And people were like, yeah, dog, that's, that's the wheel. That's, that's Theta Gang. So I started looking up more similar strategies about how I can pull this off. And um, I mean, once you understand covered calls, you understand puts, you understand what these options are actually doing, you understand what an FD actually does, not just as a speculation vehicle, but as an investment tool, once you understand that a call allows you to buy options at the strike at any point before the expiration date, once you really kind of get that through your head, it all just starts melding together. So, uh, yeah, I guess I reinvented the wheel, Billy Jones. Good point. I re yeah, Pretty much. I thought I made it up. I thought it was a new invention. It was, it's, you know, I was ready to get my PhD from an you know, honorary PhD. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's how I got into options. And since then, it's just taken off because it all starts making sense. Like I'm at the point now where I can just look at a strategy and like a look at how somebody has bought their calls and puts and I can give, I can pretty much tell what's going on there. So once you get the basics down, it just, it just rolls. So it goes into it. Um, so the 3K challenge is I put on the trade today. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because that would spoil the fun, but it expires on August 21st. So as soon as I have time after August 21st, then I'll start making the videos again. Um, so far, the trade is up 25%. My usual rule is if you make 25% within the first couple hours, just close the trade. Close it. You've already made money. I'm not going to show you my car. All right. It is a Nissan Rogue. Okay. There you go, Mr. Medic. It's a Nissan Rogue. 2016 16 Nissan Rogue. All right. Um, <clears throat> I want to buy a Tesla soon, eventually. But um, yeah, somebody banned this dude. He's just spamming. Hey, um, what was I actually talking about before he interrupted me? See if I can ban this dude. Put user in timeout. He's kind of, I'm trying to read, but all he's doing is is distracting me. Um, I don't even remember what I was talking about at this point. But once you, the, three, oh, the 3K challenge. So I put on the trade today. It's up 25% so far, you know, before I started this live stream. I don't know what it's done since. My usual rule is to, um, is to take a trade off if you make 25% within the first couple hours. Because that's usually an indication that it's a whipsaw. But the stock is it's gone in your favor and then it might bounce back because the, the the trade you entered at the right time but it was so fast that you know it's likely to bounce back so uh usually i'd take the trade off at this point but since it's for the 3k challenge i'm gonna let it run i'll probably take it off at about 75 80 90 percent and then do another one um it'll be like i said it's gonna expire on the 21st so as soon as i have time after that i'll start getting back in the 3k challenge i know i said there were gonna be like 20 something videos at the end of the trade at the end of the, the year, this playlist, but we're not gonna get that far. It's probably gonna, I might finish like six episodes by the end of the year, because I still wanted to get some of these Theta Gang strategies done before the end of the year, and those are important to me too. I wanna get Poor Man's Covered Call, which I've learned to really enjoy. I wanna do the Sonic Spread, which a lot of people have been asking about. I did lay on one of those trades too, um, so that one's gonna be important. And uh, the Jade Lizard and the, um, what was the last one, the Twisted Sister. It's like putting your wheel on steroids once you start using the Jade Lizard and the Twisted Sister. So I wanna get those out and then I'll be starting to really focus a lot more on the, um, on the 3K challenge because I know how super popular that strategy, that, uh, that video is. So I, uh, 
All right, quick gun quick says he was down over 10,000 and now he's near break even. Hey, good job, man. Just keep doing, keep doing what you're doing. Stick to Theta Gang and you will never ever go wrong. You know, as long as you're not putting all your money into high risk spreads, you're, you're gonna be fine. A lot better off than you would be if you were just buying FDs. Um, Joe asks, all right, do I have any advice on how to actually do a, uh, like how do I, how do I pick based on technical analysis? So MACD and RSI are the ones that you need when you're talking about technical analysis. Learn how to do those. You don't really need anything else except, all right, moving averages. All right, moving averages, MACD and uh, RSI are the three that you need. Don't, you don't need to worry about like double Bollinger Bands and Williams R and all those other things. Those are for quants. Just do, stick with the main stuff, RSI, MACD and moving averages and you'll be totally fine. Um, now, all right, and Alex asked me, he says, why did I decide to start a YouTube channel? I started a YouTube channel because I, um, I wanted to see what happens when you make a YouTube channel, basically. Like, I, it was just for fun. I wanted to see how far this could go. And I was watching people do, like, really stupid things, like girls that looked like they came off of an anime. They could just crawl out of anime. They get dressed up, and they're going to, like, eat, eat uh, grass. I don't know. They're going to eat, like, cake. They're just eating cake and bread. And they've got 2 million views on a video that they published three days ago. They've got 100 million subscribers, and all they're doing is rubbing their faces into bread. I'm like, all right, if they can make a YouTube channel <laughs> rubbing their face into bread, and then you look them up on Social Blade, and they're making like 500 bucks a day. Um, how can they make all that money doing that? Meanwhile, I'm sitting here. I go to work every day. I'm not making as much money as they are. Maybe I should give this a shot. Let me go ahead and make a YouTube video just for fun. So that's why I made Kamikaze Cash, because I wanted to go with Ninja Trader or like Samurai Investor or something like that. Every single one of those names are already taken. You'd be astonished how many Ninja Traders there are out there. So I was like, what's the closest I can get to a Ninja or a Samurai? Fuck it, Kamikaze, let's go. Nobody wanted Kamikaze, so I was like, all right, Kamikaze Cash. That's a good one. I wanted to go Kamikaze Cash with a K, but that would be K, 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 so I couldn't do it and I had to go Kamikaze Cash with a C. And it was supposed to be a temporary name, but it really just caught on. So it's that's what I have now. I'm Kamikaze Cash with a C. So yeah, it worked out. And um, everybody really, really enjoyed the um, the first Dank Trades video. And when I discovered Wall Street Bets, I was like, there's a gold mine here of this. I can just keep doing this all day. So um, I started making a couple of those and it caught on. I was getting subscribers. And, you know, before I knew it, um, I was getting, you know, 10, 15, 20 subscribers a day. And I was super excited about it, so I just kept going with it. And where I really made my break was when the Guh video came out. That video went viral. And that, I'm, I'm not talking about the Guh video that I made, I'm talking about the actual WSB YOLO video. That one went viral. And since one of the keywords was WSB, it started directing a whole bunch of people to my videos. And I had it, I got like, you know, the first day I got over 100 subscribers was from that video directing people to me and my videos. I was like, hey, this is an opportunity here. So it was about a week after that Gov video went viral. A lot of people were still looking at it. I made a video that talked about what had happened during that guy's trade. And I named it Gov, the legend of uh, control of the narrative. That video has made me more money and brought me more subscribers than most of the other videos put together. That is by far the highest grossing video. That was kind of my big break. You know, one video goes viral and that brought a ton of people to my channel. Um, and I mean, since then, you know, I was able to monetize right after that. And I just got super excited about where YouTube could go. And it just, it, you know, it, it's gonna be my thing. You know, I can see myself doing this for, for a long time now. And then um, I wanted to bring more content to people that I could with YouTube because these videos take like 12 hours to make, sometimes 24 hours to make a video. Um, so I also established Patreon so I could bring more content to people and realize, you know, I could actually, you know, a lot of that Patreon, it is kind of just a contribution to me so I can keep doing what I'm doing. Um, but those people that are getting onto my Patreon are, they're helping me out big time and I'm able to bring them more content. So I can do things that I can't do on YouTube because it'll take me 24 hours to make a video. It'll take me three hours to make a Patreon situation. Um, so you can get most of my Patreon content. It's like $2. I do reserve some of it for a higher tier just because I, you know, people are willing to pay for it and I need the support if I'm gonna do this full time. Um, there's still a couple of Centurion tiers left that can get you into Trap House, which is where I post my trades all real time. So I'm not trying to market this uh, Patreon right now, but um, just to talk about, you know, YouTube led to Patreon and type thing. Um, a couple of people asked me a couple of good questions, but it just, it, it, there's so much text coming through right now that I can't quite see it. Um, somebody did ask me, what's the minimum amount you can use for a Theta Gang strategy? 
the theoretical minimum is $50. So with $50, you can do a spread uh, with a max gain of, you know, as low as you want to. You can do a, with 50 bucks, you can do a, a spread with a max gain of $40, max loss of 10. Um, and you know, if, if it goes wrong, you'd still have $40 by the end of it. But you can't lay on a spread with collateral less than $50. So that's the actual minimum. And most of my trades now are in leaps, not most of them, but a large portion of them are in leaps, which is a way that you can buy an in-the-money call for a fraction of what it would cost you to actually buy shares. So for a leap with a 70 delta, which makes it the equivalent of owning 70 shares, you can buy for like what it would cost you to buy 30 shares, you can buy a leap. So that's why I'm doing it. It's a way to kind of leverage yourself when you're really confident in the, um, in the direction the market's going. Dakota asks, how much do I make off of YouTube? So this month, or the last 30 days, so September 10th, oh, sorry, uh, July 10th to August 10th, uh, it's about $1,100. Um, before COVID, it was a lot higher. It was almost triple that. But my cost per CPM, I think it's cost per mil, something like that, cost for how much I get for 1,000 people who watch an ad, basically. That was like almost $20 at one point. Now it's about 10. So the amount of money I'm getting when I run ads is half of what it used to be before coronavirus. And um, I'm also making fewer videos. So it's really taken a hit, but Patreon right now is kind of filling that gap for me. So the dream is still alive. And once I start making some more videos, I think it'll come back and it'll give me the opportunity to make a lot more. Um, and that's, and then I've got, you know, got those like ticky tacky things with referrals. By the way, get upside is an awesome thing. I've got the referral out for it. I'm saving money on gasoline and I get money back from that. So that's like $30 a month. Small, but it's enough to pay for the gasoline, you know? And then plus the referrals are another like, I don't know, $10 a month. So there's little things that do add up. And, um, but YouTube and Patreon are the big ones right now. Um, all right, Atish asks, how do I play earnings with Theta Gang? So what I like to do is play IV Crush. So I'll do an Iron Condor centered on the stock price. And if the earnings report is not exciting in either way, it's just in line, implied volatility will drop and it'll totally crush the value of that iron condor, which lets you keep the difference. Remember, when you open an iron condor, you are selling it. So when you wanna buy it back, you want it to be low, you want the price to decrease. So if I sell an iron condor right before earnings, an IV crush reduces the value of that condor, and now I can buy it back and keep the difference. And Frosted asks, how far, how wide are my iron condors? So if I'm playing, uh, playing earnings, you know, I'm playing IV Crush. I'll set the wings pretty far apart, like $200, $200 apart. Um, that lets you really take the most advantage off of IV Crush. Because remember, every, all four of your legs on that iron condor are getting crushed from IV Crush. And the ones that are closest to the money are the ones that are going to get crushed the most. So when I'm selling my iron condor legs, I want the ones that are really close to the money to be the ones that I'm selling to get IV Crush the most. And the ones that are out here on the side, I hope this, is, this visual is working, the ones out here, I want them to get crushed less. So when all four of them drop, I want them to drop like this. If that makes any sense. So I can buy them back and benefit the most from IV Crush. I know this is kind of confusing, but I've got the video on Iron Condors that kind of explains that. Um, it might make a little bit more sense. If I'm not playing earnings, they're, they're pretty tight. They're like, I'll put them, uh, you know, one, like two strikes apart, like $100 max loss. And I want to see more than $50 max gain for every $100 max loss. I think somebody asked again about the um, about the earnings. So like my total earnings from YouTube and everything associated with it per month is probably like 22, 2300, something like that. Um, it was more at one point, but you know, coronavirus really crushed the amount that people are paying for ads. So it, um, you know, it, it brought my CPM down and now it's, it's less money. And um, so another person asked, what do you do if you're a brand new beginner? You have no idea what you're doing. Uh, I mean, that's tough. I don't really recommend paper trading because it takes away a couple of really important aspects of it. All right, you guys want to meet, you guys want to meet Becky? Here she is. So, here, here's Becky. Here's baby. So, once she's about three years old, she and I are going to do the million, or what, what's she going to be? Becky Billions. We're going to do the Mikey Billions versus Becky Billions Stock Options Challenge. And she's probably going to end up picking stocks to trade based on, like, you know, the colors or the name. And I'm going to actually try to use Theta Gang strategies to outperform her. And I swear to God, if I don't win, you guys, just she's, she's the thing. Just follow her. I'm gonna, poor thing's going to have a camera in the face from the time she's three. She has one in her face right now. And um, 
you know, we'll get her started. We'll get her involved in the 3K challenge as well. Hopefully by then it's a lot more than 3K. Hopefully it's more like 100K, but we'll see. Um, she's really interested in my dog right now. You guys want to meet Snoof? Come here. Come here, pup. And here's Snoof. Here's Snoof, dog. <laughs> she doesn't know how to use a phone, but there she is. So since her name is Becky, somebody points out she's probably going to outperform like literally everybody. And I, I think that's probably true. <laughs> um, part of the joke is that I, we chose Becky is because it's part of a joke. And I'm, I hope that stays funny 10 years from now. But right now, that's, uh, I've got high hopes for what she can do. Um, funny enough, you know, my trade this week for the 3K challenge actually is one of the Becky stocks. I'm not going to tell you which one. I want to keep it a surprise. But I'm trading Becky stocks um, in honor of little baby Becky. And um, once she has a portfolio, like right now, she does actually have a portfolio. It's in a 529 college savings plan. Most of it is invested straight into the S&P 500. Um, once she has a self-directed account that I'm going to manage for her as her director or whatever, um, it's going to be pretty much a straight Becky portfolio because it always outperforms. And people are asking, what is Becky? So that's the things that white girls buy. The idea is that the people who are willing to spend the most money versus what they make are all white girls named Becky. So you're talking about Starbucks, Lululemon, Ulta Beauty. Some people put Apple in there. I don't quite agree with that. I think Apple is too widely consumed to be a, a Becky stock. All right, Peloton, that's another one. Uh, Etsy is a good one. Uh, there's a handful of other ones that I'm forgetting, but those are all the Becky stocks. So with the assumption that white girls are gonna buy those things, they're always gonna spend their money on them, so they're gonna outperform the rest of the market when it comes to their fundamentals, and the, tech and the, the stock will follow that. So that's what her portfolio is probably going to be pretty heavily. Uh, Cody could be one, yes, C-O-T-Y. That one, um, if you're a more aggressive Becky, you can be in that one too. And I would love to see somebody index the Becky stocks. If anybody can pull that off, I would absolutely shell that thing, and I would probably put a substantial amount of money into it. I would love to see a B -E B C K Y. I think would be the best ticker for it. So if nobody else makes it, I'm going to too. Hey, Dante, buongiorno. Io sono felice che tu stai qua. So... Hello from Italy, he said. So, um, yeah, some guy on Wall Street Bets did do the Becky portfolio, and he ended up returning about 50% year to date, which is obviously outperforming the market. Which, by the way, is like in the market itself. Like even outperforming the market right now is tough. I mean, we're talking about really substantial returns. Even though the market has is technically down this year, you know, over the last five years, it is really hard to outperform Triple Q. I mean, that one is up this year. Who thought that during a recession? the tech index will be making new highs. I mean, that's just incredible. So anybody who can honestly say that they've outperformed Triple Q is doing great. Um, I'm pretty much on par with Triple Q. I think I'm, I was outperforming by like 0.1% last time, but I did, you know, meet Triple Q's return, but with less risk because it's, um, you know, if Triple Q had gone the other way or it had stayed flat, I would be massively outperforming. If it goes up any higher, I'm probably not gonna be performing anymore. Um, but if you want a magic trick to outperforming Triple Q, just put all your money into Triple Q and then sell way out of the money covered calls. So you can, you'll, because remember, you're invested in Triple Q and you're pulling premium on top of it. So if your whole goal is just to outperform Triple Q, put all your money into that, sell way out of the money FDs that are unlikely to ever hit and you'll, you'll almost always outperform. So, and Glacial Outwash said he's outperforming Triple Q just on selling cash covered puts. So year to date, um, I mean, is that year to date that you're doing it or is that over the last five years? Because if you're outperforming Triple Q over the last five years, by any substantial margin, that's you are doing something right with your theta strategies. You're picking the right stocks to sell cash secured puts on. And if that's the case, then please do share those, those tickers right here. Um, like I said, over the last five years, I think, I might out, I think I'm outperforming Triple Q by a little bit. Year to date, I am not outperforming Triple Q. I'll be the first to, to admit that. I didn't think that stocks were gonna bounce this much. So I kept a lot of my portfolio in cash. Well, that's, all right, so Glacial says that's the past three months. All right, so you've been riding up this, this good wave. Keep it up, keep doing what you're doing. And, um, you know, keep make, turn that past three months into the past 12 months. That would be that would be good. I mean, it's over the short term, yeah, you can outperform it, but um, it's it has been impressive what Triple Q's been able to do, you know, this year. So keep doing what you're doing though, because if you're outperforming over the last three months when the spike has been fast, then you're probably doing, I hope you're doing something sustainable. So just, just keep at it, it'll, it'll keep rising. Um, over the past five years, you know, Triple Q's had its ups and downs, but it's been probably about the strongest performing index I can remember ever. So 
That's a really good buy and hold investment, by the way. And above 335 today, so we're almost at break even. Or I think we might actually be up for the year, but we are only what one percent away from all time highs during a recession. That's crazy. But why I talked about this yesterday on the live stream, the reason I think that's happening is because the only people that are unemployed right now are the ones that weren't buying stocks. You know, they're the, the people who are waiters. You know, they're in the service industry. They're not making a ton of money. So they're not buying. I don't think we start going back down again until either the government fails to support this market, j House printers, you know, they just stop printing, or um, if rich people start losing their jobs. Then I think that we'll start seeing another downturn. Until then, we're just melting right up, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So I do have about probably a th I think it's about a third of my portfolio in Triple Q, uh, but Triple Q is already a diversified portfolio. I mean, it's got like there's like a hundred stocks inside Triple Q. So if you want to be well diversified, just buy those indices, buy Spy, buy Triple Q, and you already have a diverse portfolio. When people say I hear them all the time. Hey, my goal is to buy 100 shares of every stock on the Dow 30. All right, that, that's good. I mean, your head is in the right place. You want a diverse portfolio. But if you want to buy 100 shares of everything in the Dow, just buy the ticker DIA. That is an ETF that tracks the Dow. So, I mean, it's weighted pretty much the same way you just said. When you buy, buy 100 shares of each, just buy DIA. And you, you already have a balanced, diverse portfolio invested all across the board on the Dow. And you can do the same thing with the S&P. Just buy SPY. You know, you don't have to buy shares of 500 individual stocks. You can just buy SPY. And you're going to have a diverse portfolio just in that. So if somebody says, hey, I don't want to do that. It's not a diverse portfolio. I need diverse holdings. They're incorrect. Holding those ETFs is a very diverse portfolio. And if you really want to get diverse, do WTI. That's the, like, the total market something or else. I don't, I don't even know what's in that, but it's like Earth. Like you're buying Earth when you buy that. So buying any of those indices, you're already diversifying your portfolio. So don't sweat it feeling like you need a fixed number of uh, stocks from different ones. Um, somebody asked me about T triple Q. That's the three times leveraged ETF on triple Q. So I do own shares of that right now. I haven't had a lot of luck in the past with, um, with leveraged ETFs because I bought SPXS. So that's the three times bearish. Oh wait, hold on. WTI. That was the incorrect one. Um, I gave you the wrong ticker. Somebody, somebody type in the comments. What's the, like the Vanguard total market index? Do, do that one. It's not WTI. It's something else. I gave you guys the wrong ticker. Look that one up. Hey, I kills you. Thank you so much for that super chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks everybody. Anybody who supports, I really do appreciate it from you guys. V, VTI, not WTI, VTI. Thank you guys. That's the correct ticker. VTI, not WTI. So, uh, do that one. I'm sort of squeaking my mic. I'm sorry. Okay. VTI is the Vanguard Total Market ETF. So if you want a very diverse leverage, I haven't had a lot of luck with the leveraged ones because I bought SPXS, which is the three times bearish stock uh, for the S&P 500. She dropped her binky. I bought that in, uh, in the middle of March. So pretty much right before the market bottomed, I went full bear with, um, hold on, let me get this binky. Get it, get it, Becky, grab it. No, 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 don't do that. Okay, we got it. Right before the market hit the bottom, I ended up going full bear. And I, I didn't lose a ton because I was wheeling it, so I only lost, like, I don't know, three grand or something like that. But I've been bitter about it since then. Here, take this one. Take, take this. Get the banky. Okay. Okay, there we go. She's happy now. Um, I bought SPXS right at the bottom, and the thing about those leveraged ETFs is that since it's compounded daily, all right, if you lose, if the S&P goes down 3% in a day, that means that SPXS is going down 9%. So if you have a 9% loss, you don't need 9% up to get back to break even. You need like 11% to get back to break even. That's just how percentages work with math. Right? So rather than the base index, like SPY, if it loses 3%, it needs to go back up, you know, 3.2% on a leveraged index, then you've got, hold on, let's sit down here. If you've got a leveraged index, 
you need a substantially higher amount for you to get back to break even. So that's why if you look at SPY right now, we're pretty much break even for, for the, um, the high point. But if you look at SPXS, we're still down, I think it's like 30 or 40%. So buying leveraged has a lot of risk. She's been menacing with my nose. Got Doggo down here trying to get attention. This is more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. Um, anyway, that's the risk of getting into those leveraged ones. But when the market performs really well, you can outperform substantially. So I do have shares of Triple Q right now, and I have T Triple Q also, just to mess around with it. I think there really is value there if you're looking at a long-term bull market, buying those leveraged ETFs. I'm already up like 15% on T Triple Q. So that's a, that could be a really good investment for a lot of people. But you've gotta be confident in the direction the market's going, and I would never recommend putting a ton of your money into that. You wanna spread it around, and putting it into those leveraged ETFs runs you the risk of a big crash. And is there a lot going on right now? I mean, despite the printers, despite all of the, um, you know, all the government intervention propping this market up, and despite how unemployment is now a good thing somehow, despite all that, the market really does have, you know, it's liable to start dropping down substantially at any time. <sighs> she's making this difficult for me. Look, she's looking around. Becky, we're gonna make you so rich one day. Be the richest baby in all the world. She's gonna be so spoiled. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the triple leveraged ETFs. I kills you. Thank you once again. I appreciate it. The amount you've given back to me is huge. Thank you so much for that super chat. Um, and he's he's talking about the Discord. So we've got you know the Discord is free. You can see it in the um, in a lot of my videos. You know I'll have it down in the description. You can join the Discord for free if you want the the premium channels where you can get access to my trades all the time. And then we, it's pretty serious. You know we do a lot of like high level discussion on different strategies. Um, you can get into that right now there's you know it's expensive though because i need to i'm trying to turn this into a full-time job i need i need money to do it um the centurion tier right now is 50 dollars a month which i know is a lot but if you've got the capital to throw around then you know we will make that back for you that is i can't guarantee you that but a lot of guys are doing really well with what we've talked about and some of the strategies we've thrown down um, and then you can also get into the the henchman hangout box which is two dollars a month um it's more direct access to what we're doing um but it's not going to give you my real-time plays. Occasionally, I'll drop them in there just, you know, if I'm excited about something. But if you want access to me, what I'm doing full-time, then it's, it's the, uh, the $50 a month right now is going on. Um, Tobias, I don't agree that that's a hustle because I'm trying to, you know, I'm le being legitimate about it. You know, if you want your money back at the end of a month, you say, this isn't very good, I'll refund you. I can refund one month on Patreon. Um, it's, it's 50 bucks, you know, it's not, for me, it's not going to really make a dent in my going full-time with this thing. Um, but thank you guys, the ones that are saying right now that it's worth it. I do appreciate it. A lot of work goes into that. Discord, it's mostly done by Mr. IV. He's kind of the, does all the work in the background. But I hope you guys do enjoy that, that Discord, because I love it, honestly. It's so much fun for me, too, to see what goes on in there. So, hey, thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for the endorsement. <sighs> She's tired. Look at her. This baby wants to go to bed. So, I'll give it a couple more minutes, but soon enough, I'm going to have to put Becky down. You guys... <sighs> But, um, oh, and yes, of course, on Patreon, there's also the posts that I make. So whenever I'm stuck working on night shift, I'm a cartographer for the government. Um, whenever I'm on night shift, there's just really not that much work to be done. So I'll, uh, I'll make a Patreon post. You know, this is some of the things that I talked about, like a new strategy. Um, not a new strategy, but a strategy that I haven't done a video on before. I'll be able to put one of those together or I'll pick out some dividend things that I really like. Um, those, ones are, those ones are fun for me. I have fun making those videos. Uh, they're good mental exercise. I have fun making those posts, so you'll expect, I don't know, it's not, a, I'm not doing it every day, probably like four a month, maybe. So there's access to that, and plus the higher tier ones, you'll get access to my plays. Um, I could do it for free, but I need, I know, I want to open up more $10, one, $10 ones, Jake, but I, you know, if I'm going to make this a full-time thing, I need, I need to make enough money for this to get me there, and I'm not going to get there with, you know, a thousand people giving me $10 each, because I'm not going to get a thousand people to do it. I need, I need the higher tier ones. So I don't like charging 50 bucks a time, but I, you know, it's kind of what I got to do to get where I want to be. Um, every once in a while, a $20 tier will pop up because some people join the Lancer tier, which is $20, and then they like don't participate in Patreon, which like makes no sense to me. They're basically just giving me money and then not participating. So they'll drop off all the time. There's a couple more that are still in there. I've never seen them on the Discord, so they might just ditch, and then those opportunities will pop up, somebody could jump on for 20 instead of 50. But anyway, um, anything anyone else wants to talk about? Any questions? I'll give it 
another couple minutes here because it's been almost an hour and a half and as you can see Becky is not too happy with me right now so we'll do a couple more minutes of this I'll make it an even 90 but what else does anybody want to talk about for the next couple minutes all right Atish asks can you do spreads for earnings yes of course you can uh, take advantage of IB crush all right data get what is Python um, so somebody's asking about Python. If you're talking about the coding thing, I don't really know how to code with Python, but I'd imagine you could write some algos if you want to. Uh, my day job right now, I'm a cartographer, so I spend most of my day and night sometimes looking at maps. It's, it's Sometimes it's really fun, sometimes it's really boring. I do like the fact that I can talk about the face of the earth better than like literally anybody I know, because that's my job. So I make maps all the time. Um, mostly I look at maps and edit them, but sometimes, yeah, you will do a little bit more. Um, all right, Atish also, you're asking a lot of good questions. The Apple split. So I am excited about the Apple split and I bought a leap to take advantage of it. So with the Apple split, they're gonna turn every share of Apple into four shares. So right now it's like $450. They're gonna knock it down to, what is that, 113 or something like that. And that's gonna give more access to people that they wanna buy Apple, but they're not trying to drop 400 bucks at a time for a share. So I own 115 shares of Apple. That's gonna bring it up to, uh, once they split, I'm gonna have 460. So now I'm not just doing one wheel at a time, I'm doing four. It gives you a lot more options for liquidity. And instead of having to put up 100 out of 115 shares in collateral for a play, I could now do you know, two wheels out of four. So now I'm not wheeling my entire investment into Apple at a time. I can hold half the shares and wheel the other half. It gives a lot of opportunity. So I bought a leap on it. That leap is gonna represent 400 shares once it splits. So I'm basically long 500 and something shares at this point after the split is done. So that's good. Um, condolences on holding your investment. Thank you. Um, if you invest in real estate, a thousand every month for 20 years, that's 750,000. Yeah, real estate is a um, is a good investment. I'm waiting for the, the market to like completely collapse so I can buy some houses. Um, so far, that hasn't happened. So I'm still waiting for it. Um, people have asked a couple times, did I go to college and did I get a degree? So I went to James Madison University for my bachelor's degree. I started off with um, an international relations degree, but I realized the curriculum is going to take me a little bit longer than the political science with a concentration in international affairs. No, uh, she is going to kill me. All right, all right, all right. Give me three more minutes here, Becky. So I... um. I got my bachelor's in political science featuring international affairs as a concentration. And then I went back to school a couple years later and got a master's in intelligence studies um, to support my government thing. Oh, hey, Hayden went there. Hayden went there too. Hey, go Dukes, go Dukes. Um, I do have an opportunity from the army. I'm entitled to the GI Bill so I can get a PhD basically for free. Uh, I just broke my glasses. <sighs> just broke my glasses. But, um, uh, yeah, I have an opportunity to go back for a free PhD. I just don't know what I want to do it in yet. Now, obviously, I don't have time to get a PhD right now. So, all right, two more minutes. I want to get to even 90. And then, all right, I'm going to run out of time here. But, um, and then last thing, a couple of guys are going to talk more about leaps. So leaps are, I owe you guys a video on this. There is a Patreon post on it you, got, you can get to. But um, leaps are, they are a long-term call contract, usually deep in the money. All right, so these calls will last three years sometimes, two years, whatever. Um, you're buying a call with a delta that's high. So if you're not familiar with delta, um, delta is a representation of how much value will the contract change based on $1 of change in the underlying price. So if you have a delta of 0.7, that means for every dollar the stock goes up, the value of that contract will increase or decrease by 70 cents. So if you're owning 100 shares with that contract, it's $70. Does that make sense? Like a 0.7 delta basically represents this contract will be the equivalent to 70 shares of stock. But it'll be much cheaper than it would cost you to buy 70 shares of stock. So you can buy a leap with a 0.7 delta for about what it would cost you to buy 25, 30 shares of stock. You can leverage yourself with that and you've got another two years before the contract expires. So you buy an in-the-money call with a high delta. I usually go out about two years on these things. All right, and then over that time, as the stock rises, the contracts will rise with it, and those leaps allow you to own a large proportion of shares for a 
fraction of what it costs you to actually buy into the stock. So I own leaps that represent about 250 shares of SPY. But to enter that position, it cost me about 20,000. $20,000 isn't even enough to buy 100 shares of SPY. But now I'm controlling, essentially, 250 shares for what would be the price of about, what is that, 70, 80 shares of SPY? I'm able to, or I think it's like 66 shares of SPY, I'm able to control 240 shares of it with the same price, 250 shares with the same price. So leaps are, are tremendous. Look up leaps. I will make a video on it at some point. Um, there is the, if you're on Patreon, there's one there too. Um, I guess I better cut it here because I got to put the baby to bed and my wife's not too happy with me right now. So all right, thanks all of you guys that tuned in for the last, you know, for the past hour and a half. I really do appreciate it. And thanks especially to you guys that gave me the super chats. That's tremendously helpful. It encourages me to keep doing this. So I'll keep making videos when I've got more time off. When I don't have a ton of time off, I'll do things like this or I'll be making Patreon posts if I'm at work. So thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Hope you all got something out of this and I'll catch you guys next time.